Let's take the mixed number 4 and 12 fourteenths, and we would like to simplify that. So we see the 12 and the 14, they're both even numbers, so we can simplify that. The 4 comes along for the ride, the 12 and the 14th, we can divide the top and bottom by whatever we want, so we're going to choose to divide by 2, because we see that they're both even numbers. 4 is still here, 12 divided by 2 is 6, and 14 divided by 2 is 7, because 7 times 2 is 14. This is the final answer, because 6 and 7, I cannot divide any further there to make that any simpler. So 4 and 6 sevenths. Alright, let's take a look at problem number 2. What about uh, 3 and 6 eighths? Alright, again I have even numbers here, so we'll try that. The 3 comes along for the ride, the 6 eighths. We want to divide top and bottom by, what did we say? By 2. Divide top by 2 and bottom by 2. Whole number of 3 is still there. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So we get 3 and 3 fourths. That's the final answer. All right. Let's take something a little more challenging. Let's take a look at the following. 6 and 7 thirds. Now the 7 and the 3, we can't divide top and bottom to simplify, but we notice that this is an improper fraction. Like we talked about in the last lesson, the numerator is bigger than the denominator, so we think in our mind that this is basically like 6 plus whatever 7 thirds comes out to be. But this improper fraction can be converted to a mixed number, and we already learned how to do that. We use division. So we take 7 and we divide it by 3 because that's what a fraction is, 7 divided by 3. 3 times 2 is 6. That's as close as we can go. Subtract with a remainder of 1. So what we figured out is that over here we have the 6, and then this gets converted into a whole number of 2 with a remainder of 1 out of thirds, One slice when the slices are cut into thirds. So it's 2 and 1 third. Next, we add the whole number. 6 plus 2 is 8 and 1 third. So we say that the answer is 8 and 1 third. That's the final answer. So basically this 7 thirds contributes two more whole numbers to what we had, and then there's a little fraction still left over. All right, moving right along, let's take a look at the problem 8 and 3 ninths. So we have a whole number of 8, and then we have that 3 ninths. What do you think we're going to divide that 3 and the 9 by? Well, of course, both of these are divisible by 3. So divide the top by 3, divide the bottom by 3, and we get a whole number of 8. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So we get an answer of 8 and 1 third, and that's exactly the same. What we're doing here is we're just finding it in simplest form. This is exactly the same amount as this. All right, let's take a look. What happens if we have something like 2 and 20 ninths? So we, again, see we have this improper fraction here. So in our mind, we think that this is like 2 whole pizzas plus whatever 20 ninths works out to be. How do we figure out 20 over 9? We divide. We convert it to a mixed number. Divide by 9. Now 9 times 2 is 18. That's as close as I can get, 18. And 20 minus 18 is 2. So what I figured out is the whole number is 2, but this 20 ninths is converted into a whole number of 2 plus a remainder of 2 when the fraction is cut into ninths. So 2 and 2 ninths. So the whole numbers I can add as 4, and then the 2 ninths is right here. So I have 4 and 2 ninths. I cannot simplify the 2 ninths any further because, you know, I can't divide by 2 or by 3 or anything like that. So that is the halfway mark. Let's take a look at the next problem. Let's say we have 6 and 9 halves. Now if you think about it, if, it's, if the fraction is halves, if I had two halves, that would be another whole, but I have nine halves, so this improper fraction is going to give me a lot more holes. Six plus nine halves, right? But what does nine halves work out to be? If I go over here and do the division, nine divided by two. Well, two times four is eight. That's as close as I can get, and that gives me a remainder of one. So this means it's six plus, this works out to be four holes, is what it works out to be, a remainder of one when the guys are, are sliced into halves here, so four and a half. And the six plus four is ten, and then of course I have ten and a half. So this comes out to ten and a half. So this nine halves works out to be a lot of holes, because think about it, if I have a pizza cut into halves, only two halves are required to make another hole, but I have nine halves. So it actually gives me four whole more pizzas, but then I have an extra half left over, so I have to tack that on to the end. 
All right. Now let's take a look at problem number seven. What if we have five and a five halves? Five and five halves. Again, improper fraction. So it'll be like five plus whatever five halves works out to be. So then we go over here and let's figure out what five halves is. Take the five and divide it by two. Two times two is four. That's as close as I can get. Subtract, get a remainder of one. So this works out to be five from here, plus this division, when it convert to mixed number, it goes two whole times, remainder of one in cut into halves. Every slice is in a half, so it's two and a half. And then five plus two is seven, and then I end up with seven and a half. That is the final answer. All right. What about, only I think two or three more problems left, what about one and 16 twentieths? Now this is not imp uh, improper, this is a proper fraction, but I can divide top and bottom by something. So 16 twentieths. Now, you could divide by two because we see that they're even numbers, but if we think a little harder, I think we can agree, we can also divide it by something larger. We can divide by four. What do we get? We get 16 divided by four is four, because four times four is 16. 20 divided by four is five, because five times four is 20. So the answer is one and four fifths. If I divided by two, then I would get some, some answer, but I would be able to divide by two again, and then I would end up in the same exact place. All right, so we only have two more problems. Here we go, eight and 16, 36. Eight and 16, 36. So this is, again, a, a proper fraction, so we don't have any improper, anything to deal with there. What can we divide by? 16, 36. So, you know, I'm not really sure, but I know that I can divide by two. So I'm going to divide by two. Divide by two in the top, two in the bottom. What do I get? Eight and 16 divided by two is eight and 36 divided by two. I'm not sure about that. So let's go over here. 36 divided by two. Two times one is two. Subtract, get a one. Drag the six down. Two times what is 16? Two times eight is 16. Subtract, remainder zero. So 36 divided by two is 18, so 18 goes down here. Now I think, am I done? Well, no, I'm not done because these are also uh, even numbers. So let's take eight and eight sixteenths. What can we divide them by? I'm sorry, not sixteenths, eight and eight eighteenths. That's what I was trying to write. Let me fix that, eighteenths. Well, I can divide uh, both by two. So let's do that, divide by two, divide by two. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 18 divided by 2 is 9, because 9 times 2 is 18. So I get an answer of 8 and 4 ninths. 8 and 4 ninths is exactly the same thing as 8 and 16 36, like that. All right, now we are on our very last problem. Let's take a look at 7 and 19 thirds. Now, if you think about it, in terms of the thirds, if I have three thirds, three on the top and three on the bottom, three thirds is just one whole. But I have 19 thirds. So whatever happens here, this is going to add a lot of holes. So let's see what happens. Seven plus 19 thirds. And we need to figure out what this works out to be in terms of, of um, a, um, a mixed number. So 19, let's divide it by three. Three times six is 18. That's as close as I can get with a remainder of one. So what happens is I have a seven here, but this goes six whole times. The remainder is one and the denominator was three. And then I can add the seven plus six, I get 13 and one third. Notice that, as I said in the beginning, three thirds would just be one whole, but I have 19 thirds. So it contributed a lot. There's six whole pizzas that come just from this and then a little bit left over for an answer of 13 and a third. I think that's enough. I think you get the idea. Uh, simplifying mixed numbers, things, you have to think about things a little bit. You have to use the previous skills. We have to know how to convert improper to mixed, for instance, in order to even do this for half of these problems. That's why we, we learn math. We learn one little skill at a time, mastering it. So when you get up here, you already have the tools. So what I'd like you to do is solve all of these yourself. Follow me on to the next lesson. We're going to learn uh, how, the, how the best way to compare two fractions is, figure out which fraction is larger and which fraction is smaller. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.